So a while ago, I made some videos to explain in detail how dividends work. And at that time, to be honest, I was not really a dividend investing person. But in May 2022, I realized something, something big, huge secrets about what dividend investing really is. Then instantly, I got over the mental blocks, really quickly iterated my strategy and started to buy a dividend stock every single day. So in today's video, I'm going to share those two big secrets that I discovered and my dividend investing plan going forward. This is not about a power of compound, pick the right dividend stock, don't chase the yield, it reinvest your dividend. No, 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 no. You know all those, those are too basic. These two realizations, I've never heard anybody talk about it on YouTube. Not even the big dividend advocates like Andre and Joseph. So I promise you, that's gonna be something new, something revelating, something that could potentially change the way that you think about investing. And with that said, let's get into it, yeah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. So here we go, ready? The first secret is that the focus of dividend investing is different from that of growth investing because the cash flow generation of a dividend portfolio is different from that of a growth portfolio. That's the first secret. The second secret is that the account value between the two portfolios in the end is going to be different, could be even dramatically different. A growth portfolio will likely drop to zero and a dividend portfolio will keep all its money. Get it? Easy, right? Huh? If you have a minute, allow me to elaborate in great detail. I want to walk you through what it is, how it works, and why dividend investing deserves to be its own investment strategy. Just like my other finance video, you don't have to smash the like button just yet to the, in the end if you find this video useful or insightful, hold me accountable. Now, without further ado, let's dive right into it. So let's go over the first realization first. Dividend and growth investing have different focuses. There are some layers in this one, but don't worry, I'm going to unpack all that for you. For growth investing, your focus is capital appreciation. You want to grow your account as much as possible, as fast as possible. For dividend investing, on the other hand, you don't really focus too much on account value. Instead, you pay more attention to the quarterly dividend payout that you will get that you receive from those dividend paying companies. This difference directly relates to the cash flow generation, specifically how you generate cash from your investment portfolio when you decide that you want to retire or you need money to live off of overall. My investment needs to pay me at some point, right? Otherwise, what am I investing for? To get cash out of my stock portfolio, there are mainly two ways, active cash flow generation and passive cash flow generation. When I retire, that cash will be my income. So they become the same as active and passive income generation. Now you might start to see some connections. For active income, I have to do something actively to get the cash. In this context, that means selling stocks in my investment portfolio. For example, I bought one shares of SPY in 2015 for 240 ish. And if I want to quit my job and live off of my investments, I want to sell it today and I will get 400 ish back as cash. I actively sell it. I receive cash. That's my active income. The more money my investment account is worth, the more money I can receive that I can get by selling the shares in it. So I need to focus on growing that account value. Passive income will come from dividend. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to log into my account. I don't need to sell a single share. The dividend paying company will pay me cash in dividend. That means as long as that dividend amount can cover all my living expenses, I don't really care about how much money my dividend portfolio is worth. Therefore, my focus on dividend investing is actually the dividend payout amount, not the account value. I find that very interesting. And that's the first secret. It's about cash flow generation. It's about the two different models of generating that. I'm gonna skip over all the details about how dividends work. I will have a card in the corner and description down below. All you have to know is, as long as you own that dividend stock in your brokerage account, you will receive dividends. You will receive cash. Apple currently has a 23 cents quarterly dividend amount. So if I own one share of Apple, I will get 23 cents this quarter, next quarter, next, next quarter, next, 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 next quarter, forever, non-stop. And the amount can be higher if they keep growing their dividend payout. For Starbucks, it's 49 cents. So if I own one share of Starbucks, I will get 49 cents this quarter. 
next quarter, next, next quarter, next, 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 next quarter, forever, non-stop as well. So very simple, straightforward. The information is easy to look up, very easy to understand. Now, let's look at the second secret, my next big realization. The account value between dividend and growth portfolios in the end is going to be different, built directly on top of my first realization. And they're connected just because with growth portfolio, you need to sell something, but for dividend portfolio, you don't need to. The profound long-term implication, also the beauty of this, is all the money that I have in my portfolio, in my dividend portfolio, is going to stay in my portfolio forever. If I buy and hold SPY for 30 years and it grows to just enough that I can use the 4% rule to retire, I will need to actively sell 4% of my SPY every year to generate the cash to live off of. If I do that, by the very end of my life, I will likely sell out all the SPY shares in my account and my account value will drop to zero. I die, my portfolio dies too. We're going to hell together. Yay! That actually sounds quite depressing. However, dividend portfolios paints a very different picture. According to the 21st century source of truth, Google, the median household income in the US is $67,000. And $500. And let's round it up to 68K. Assume I have a median household, that 68K is all I need to live every year. And if I have $1,687,500 investing in one dividend stock, let's just round it up to 1.7 million, assume it pays 4% dividend yield, every year I will receive 68K dividends. This is real cash with no string attached that I can use to pay for my rent, pay for my gas, buy food to go see Mickey Mouse. It gets even better. Here's the magic. Since I don't need to sell any shares in my account, all the dividend stock I have in my account will stay in my account. I will still own them. Remember what we said earlier, if you own the stock, you will receive dividends. If I do exactly that to have 1.7 million worth of dividend stocks in my portfolio, by the very end of my life, I will still have 1.7 million in my brokerage account. And it will keep paying my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, 68K, every single year, non-stop forever. They can trace their dreams, they can build a family empire on top of that. This is absolutely amazing. And the difference is pretty stark. Zero and a legacy. And it's a fun fact, by the way, I'm not making this up. Warren Buffett owns 400 million shares of Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola has a 44 cents quarterly dividend. That means his share will generate him a cash flow of 176 million US dollars every single quarter for life, for doing absolutely nothing. He can sit by his porch, sipping Coca-Cola, not working, and every quarter he gets 176 million dollars cash. What? Holy shit. So to sum it up, these are the takeaways. For growth investing, you want to grow your account as much as possible before you retire. So you will buy growth stocks like Tesla, Square, Zoom, or maybe any of those very innovative ones in Kathy Wood's basket. You focus on the account value in the end because when you want to retire, you will need to sell those shares to generate cash for yourself. For dividend investing, on the other hand, the focus is the dividend payout amount, not the account value. Dividend is the cash flow here. So you buy and hold dividend paying stocks like Nike, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, etc. As long as the dividend payout amount can cover your living expenses, you can retire right away and you don't have to sell anything. For growth investing, depending on how much you grow your account to, you might still have some money left in your account in the end, or it could just hit the bottom zero. For dividend investing, the dividend income stream stays consistent and you keep all the stocks, you keep all its value in the account, you can leave a legacy behind. Because they're so unique and different in their focus and end state, I concurred they're two very different investing strategies and they're both valid. Now here comes to my dividend investing plan. I will walk you through what I am doing and why I am doing it. After applying some design thinking to solve this investing problem, my need, my end goal is to live off of my investment portfolio, hopefully retire early. With my latest realizations, I identified two ways to do it actively and passively. I have been doing growth investing, so I've done the active way. Now I'll start to do both. And therefore, I started to buy a new ETF called JEPI, ticker symbol JEPI, an income fund by JP Morgan. 
that aims to generate monthly income for its shareholders. It currently has a dividend yield over 10%. It fluctuates but it's great for now. I have been buying it every single day since May 2022. As you can see the long scrolls on my Robinhood account. And my cash flow from last month was a whopping $2.78. Amazing. Check back in six months, it could blow your mind even more. That's my plan is to keep buying every single day. On Robinhood, I set a recurring investment on Jappy for $4 every single day. Not yet a huge amount, but since I can do fractional shares on Robinhood, it's a really good way to get me started. I will add more money to it over time, and I'm really looking forward to that, I'm not selling anything, and receiving a lot of money future. Those are the two realizations that changed my investing strategy, but they only covered the new findings. To make sure you have a solid understanding of the fundamentals, the basics of dividend investing to get you started and avoid some common traps, I have used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture all those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to support the channel. Keep using design to help screw up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.